Hey everybody, welcome to Texas 2.5 Barbecue. Today we're going to do five quick tips on how to manage your offset smoker fire. Let's get going. Now let's get one thing clear right off the bat. This is intended to be five quick tips. It is not comprehensive. I'm hoping later this summer to make a full length fire management video for offset smoking. But today's is just five quick hits for beginners to help get you started. Tip number one. Use lump charcoal to start your fire. Briquettes are fine and dandy in their proper place, but for starting a fire on your offset smoker, you wanna use lump charcoal. It starts faster, it starts hotter, and it's better for getting large sticks of wood going. Briquette charcoal is fine for low and slow cooking, but when you need high heat in a hurry, lump is the way to go. Tip number two, use smaller sticks than you think you'll need. Think of sticks as fire blankets. They really are fire retardants. And if you put a big wide piece of wood like this, you know, this is 16 inches long, it's probably six inches wide. If you throw this right in there on top of your chimney of charcoal, and by the way, this is almost a full chimney of lump. Look how small that looks. If you throw a big old log like this right on top of it with a flat surface, What's gonna happen? It's gonna smother your fire. It's gonna be hard to get started. Use smaller sticks. If you have to, cut one of these into thirds with a chop saw and start with that. Split it if you have an ax. One way or another, get down to smaller sticks for starting your fire. Tip number three, positioning. Like I said, this is a full chimney of lump charcoal here and it looks tiny already. However, if you have a small coal bed, you can help it out with good positioning. What I mean is this, use the walls of your smoker or another stick to position your new stick in such a way that the fire can climb the ladder. Here's what I mean, fire loves to climb. If you put this stick in here, if you put your new stick in here pointed downwards like this, it's gonna be a lot harder for this fire to catch because fire doesn't like to go downhill. But if you can reposition your coals in such a way that will allow you to climb the ladder, this thing is gonna catch quickly. Watch what I mean, because fire loves to go uphill. And I didn't even have to speed up the video. You could see right there that already within seconds, that tiny little coal bed, and again, that was a full chimney just a few minutes ago, but a bunch of it has already fallen through the grates and burned down in just 10 or 15 minutes. But yet, with that tiny little coal bed, still, it's enough to get this stick going very quickly, very nice. Tip number four, don't use green firewood. You wanna use wood that's been seasoned for at least a year. That's what I started with, and that same batch that I'm still using now is over two years old. If you use green wood, you're gonna get bad fumes and bad smoke, and it's gonna be hard to keep a good fire going. If you use good seasoned hardwood, it's gonna be easier to start your fire, you're gonna get cleaner fire, and it's gonna give your food a better flavor without risking that sooty turpentine sap type flavor that goes on with green wood. Use seasoned hardwood. Now don't rush off, because after tip number five, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip, and it's the best tip yet. Tip number five, don't let your coal bed get this small. That is way too little of a coal bed to keep a good, clean, hot fire going. You can see I've got another stick warming right here. If your coal bed is that small, you wanna get that thing built back up in a hurry. What I would do is move that first stick back a little bit and get a second one started as fast as you can. It is super important in offset smoking to maintain a good coal bed. And even with a full chimney of lump that just was dumped in here a few minutes ago, this coal bed is already less than half as big as I would normally want it to be. So as soon as you're done putting your chimney of charcoal in here, get some sticks on it. Get that thing rocking and rolling. Get your temps up. Get a nice, clean, hot fire going with a good coal bed. It'll be a lot easier to maintain for you in the long run than if you start too small with your coal bed. And before we go, here's my bonus tip for you. Buy a high quality offset smoker. If your offset is poorly built, leaky, bad airflow, 
and has poor heat management itself, you're gonna have to do all sorts of gyrations and tips and tricks and extra work to get that thing running like it ought to run. Cheap offset smokers dramatically increase the learning curve for offset cooking. If you have the money, buy yourself a good quality offset smoker. Don't come in with the mindset, well, I ought to start off cheap so that I can learn on something cheap and then I'll work my way up. That's the opposite of the truth when it comes to offset smoking. The better quality your equipment is for offset cooking, the easier it's going to be for you to learn how to cook on an offset smoker. I can personally tell you that this is the truth because before I had my Lone Star Grill, I had, it was actually not cheap. It was an expensive offset smoker, but it was not as well built as Lone Star Grills. And after five or six cooks and only a couple of months of owning that thing, I was ready to give up on offset smoking altogether and going with a vertical insulated cabinet smoker. By the way, I still want a vertical insulated cabinet smoker, uh, but not because I am frustrated with offset smoking anymore. These days, I love offset smoking because I have a high quality, well-built rig. They put a ton of thought into the design on this thing when it comes to the baffling system, the airflow, the beauty of the thing, the quality of the welds, the high quality steel, the craftsmanship, everything about it, the customer service, the help, being able to call up the company and talk to the owner himself about the design and why offsets work the way they do. Get yourself a high quality offset smoker if you're gonna do it. If you're not, stick with whatever you have and enjoy that. But if you wanna get into offset cooking, my recommendation is get something high quality. The amazing thing is the new 20 inch series from Lone Star Grills is as cheap and actually cheaper than what I would call some of the B-class offset smokers on the market. They're not bad smokers. I'm not criticizing them or putting them down, but I wouldn't put them in the A tier of offset smokers with Lone Star Grills. And yet some of those are more expensive than the most expensive 20 by 42 of the new 20 inch series. So please consider getting a Lone Star Grill. This is not sponsored, this is not paid for. Lone Star Grills hasn't asked me to say this. I'm saying it because I actually want guys who are getting into offset smoking to enjoy it and not have a first experience like I have. I think a lot of guys have had that experience and have quit on it. And if you go into it with better equipment, you can have a lot more success and a lot more fun, a lot more stress-free offset cooking. Those are my five tips for offset fire management. Again, I hope to do a full length fire management video later this summer. But for now, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share with your friends the video announcing the giveaway of this smoker. If we hit 100,000 subscribers by June 15, 2020, we're gonna give away a brand new 20 by 42 Lone Star Grills offset smoker with the off-road package shipped right to somebody's front door. It's gonna be awesome. Check that video out in the link below. Please go out right now and share it on your personal Facebook page, on a barbecue Facebook page, on a barbecue forum. The only way it's gonna happen is if we get the word out and this thing snowballs over the next year. Help us get there. Somebody's getting a Lone Star Grill. Take care, see you next time.